Daniel Jones' agents all week at Combine. They went to Jersey. Looks like they got it done just before the deadline. Daniel Jones, it is a four-year deal worth $160 million. Daniel Jones gets a big-time payday, a real legitimate franchise quarterback payday. The faithful day has come, New York Giants fans. The future of your roster is now set in stone, and we're here to discuss it. Look, I know what some people might say. Mike, you're a Dallas Cowboy fan. Obviously, you're gonna have some bias against the New York Giants. I think I've done a decent job historically analyzing each rival team in the NFC East with a complete lack of bias. As a matter of fact, the only delusional Dallas Cowboy takes I have is usually on Twitter and Instagram, and it's usually as a joke but before we get to the content make sure you drop like subscribe and turn on our notifications to help the channel grow i'm on three and a half hours of sleep right now and we're dropping three videos today or at least two now that we got all that out of the way work. So I've made almost $5,000 playing this game over the past couple months and posting my picks and selections onto my Instagram story for you guys to follow them. And the game that I'm obviously talking about is prize picks. Right now, when you use my promo code microphone, they'll match up to $100 of your initial deposit with another $100. And it's been a lot of fun. I mean, yesterday I had Killian Hayes getting less than 21 points, rebounds and assists. You went into the third quarter with 18 and he finished the game with 20.5. I can't tell you how euphoric that feeling was when I saw that I was able to make $210 off of a pick that came within 0.5 of not hitting. So if you want to check out prize picks, make sure you use my promo code microphone for a free 100% deposit match up to $100. And follow me on Instagram if you want to follow my picks on Instagram. Mike check 1212. What's going on, everybody? I already know what people are going to say. Daniel Jones just got the same exact contract that Dak Prescott got when Dak Prescott wanted a contract extension. That's not why I think this is a horrific mistake. Personally, the last time I appeared on this channel, I told you guys that the New York Giants did a huge solid for Daniel Jones. And I don't think people are acknowledging how big of a favor the Giants did for Daniel Jones. I mean, instead of exercising his fifth year option, they decided to decline it last year, which is an indication that they don't necessarily have a lot of faith in him potentially being the quarterback for the future for the New York Giants. Last year, I appeared on this channel and told you that the Giants are essentially giving Daniel Jones a prove it year under Brian Dable. And if Brian Dable could give us a sequel to what he did with Josh Allen on the Buffalo Bills, but this time with Daniel Jones and the New York Giants, then you could potentially see Daniel Jones being the quarterback for the future for the Giants. And if it doesn't pan out, well, this upcoming NFL draft class has a pretty nice quarterback class. I mean, before I was kind of underhyping it, but given what Anthony Richardson did at the scouting combine, I am absolutely blown away and I can't wait to start making some mock drafts for you guys because there's a lot of uncertainty at the top of the draft. But my initial theory was that they were tanking for Bryce Young, possibly. Bear in mind, this was a year ago, okay? And my argument for this was that every single time a brand new regime comes in, they usually try to get their guy, they try to bring in a brand new quarterback. They try to bring in pieces that they want to build around. But in this instance, it seems like the New York Giants didn't opt to do that. They decided to bring in a head coach that is known as a quarterback developer development guru in Brian Dable, and they were trying to see if Daniel Jones could live up to his potential in his fourth season in the NFL. Now, I want you guys to understand, in most situations that are similar to this, it wouldn't be atypical to see a brand new regime come in and decide to move on from Daniel Jones altogether. Daniel Jones was a Dave Gettleman draft pick. He didn't necessarily make the greatest decisions in terms of roster construction. And to be honest, I have to give Joe Schoen his props because I think he's done a masterful job retooling the New York Giants. I mean, they made it to the wild card. They won their wild card game and they were able to make it to the divisional round. They made it as far as their NFC East rival Dallas Cowboys. And I felt like as a result of this, you may see some gratitude from Daniel Jones. I mean, in any other situation, Daniel Jones may have gotten the Marcus Mariota treatment. Their careers weren't that different from one another. Marcus Mariota had significantly higher expectations when he was drafted by the Tennessee Titans. But just like Daniel Jones, Marcus Mariota had to deal with a significant 
significant amount of head coaching turnover. I mean, there were years where he showed flashes of his potential, particularly in his second year in the league when he threw for over 3,400 passing yards, 26 touchdowns, and nine interceptions for the Tennessee Titans. And on top of that, he added 350 rushing yards and two touchdowns on the ground. As a result of the inconsistency that Marcus Mariota dealt with, in particular with the head coaching staff and all the new playbooks he had to learn, I definitely think that kind of contributed to his demise as a starting QB in the NFL. Marcus Mariota would then become a backup for the Las Vegas Raiders before getting his opportunity as a bridge quarterback for the Atlanta Falcons. Unfortunately, that didn't necessarily go as planned. I don't really know what Mariota's future looks like at this point. I felt like the Falcons was his best opportunity to potentially become a starter again, but unfortunately, that wasn't the reality. My point being that Daniel Jones could have easily been the next Marcus Mariota. He could have easily had a brand new general manager and a brand new coach come in, look at him and say, hey, I want to bench you for the guy that we're developing slash the guy that we want to go out and sign or the guy that we drafted recently. Luckily for Daniel Jones, there wasn't that deep of a quarterback class last year, so they decided to run it with Daniel Jones. And as a result, he improved significantly. Bear in mind, he did this with like no wide receivers at all whatsoever. They traded Kadarius Tony in the middle of the season. They overpaid Kenny Galladay a while ago, and they recently released him, and he didn't really do anything. Sterling Shepard got injured in the middle of the season. So Daniel Jones's achievements were very significant considering the fact that he didn't really have many people to throw the football to. So I could understand why his potential is exciting. Throwing for over 3,000 passing yards, 67% completion, 15 touchdowns, and five interceptions, while also adding 708 yards rushing on the ground. That's a huge reason to be excited. At the same time, you have to understand, it's not like the moment Daniel Jones was gonna get released, there was gonna be some team that would pursue him right away and say, hey, Daniel Jones, you have so much potential. Let's sign you and build a team around you. No, he'd be a backup. Once you leave your original team, you're kind of perceived as damaged goods. Just look at what happened with Josh Rosen and the Arizona Cardinals. He gets traded to the Miami Dolphins. They didn't really give him much of a chance there either. I don't want to get into the whole debate about whether Josh Rosen was bad or whether he didn't get an opportunity, but you guys get my point here. Once a high draft pick switches teams, typically he doesn't really have a lot of opportunities to succeed. Look at what happened with Baker Mayfield and Sam Darnold, for instance. You get my point. So my initial hope was that the New York Giants and Daniel Jones would agree to something a little bit below or at least what Derek Carr was going to get from the New Orleans Saints. And recently, Derek Carr did get signed by the New Orleans Saints. He got a four-year, $150 million contract. He's making $37.5 million a year with a no-trade clause. Congrats to Derek. So I expected the New York Giants to potentially build a team around Daniel Jones and get a significant discount for Daniel Jones' services because of the huge solid they did for this young man. I mean, Daniel Jones potentially went from signing a one-year $10 million contract to, well, he ended up getting a $40 million contract, but I would imagine him being stoked at the concept of him making $30 million a year annually, and that would give the Giants capital to build a really freaking good team around him. That's not the route he opted for. His agents asked for $45 million a year, a little bit over 45 at a specific point, and eventually they decided to settle on a number. And by the way, Daniel Jones's situation being solved also gives us a resolution to Saquon Barkley. So here we go. According to Ian Rappaport and Adam Schefter, the New York Giants have agreed to a contract extension with Daniel Jones. Daniel Jones is going to be on the books for four years and $160 million with $82 million guaranteed at signing per sources. And there is another $35 million available in incentives. Saquon Barkley is currently at $10.1 million on the franchise tag. I'll give the Giants props because they got this done before any other quarterback could potentially sign an extension. They got it done before Lamar Jackson situation got dealt with. They got it done before Joe Burrow, Justin Herbert, or Jalen Hurts got a contract extension. And I also will give them props because I think franchise tagging Saquon Barkley was the right move. If you ever have a stud halfback and it's time to extend him, opt for the franchise tag. Hell, tag him twice if you have to. Tag him three times if you have to. It's never worth paying a running back a long-term salary. Take it from a Cowboy fan. I love the tagging of Saquon Barkley because he's awesome, but his availability he's a little volatile. And for that, I give him an A+. For the Daniel Jones deal, I have to give the Giants like a C-. minus. A lot of Giants fans are saying that we're paying him for his potential. And a part of me does understand that. At the same time, I was hoping that there would be some sort of understanding between the Giants and Daniel Jones that Daniel Jones would be making $10 million a year if it wasn't for the New York Giants coming in and deciding, hey, we're going to give you another shot with a quarterback guru so you could show us what you're made of. I would have liked to see a $30 to $35 million a year contract, personally but it's not the worst 
contract in the world is just not a home run for the Giants. This is the exact same amount that Dak Prescott is making, but it's a little different. There's $82 million guaranteed, which means after two years, if Daniel Jones isn't the answer for the New York Giants, then they could move on. So essentially what the Giants are telling Daniel Jones is, hey, you're either our bridge quarterback or you're going to be the guy. And it's up to you to give us some clarity on that situation over the next two years. I personally think it was a horrific mistake because if I am banking on a player to develop even further, I would much rather select a player in this upcoming NFL draft. I mean, if Brian Dable is a quarterback guru, do you think it would make sense for him to select a QB with tremendous upside and some great physical tools like Anthony Richardson, for instance, and try to develop him while he's on a rookie scale contract and not have to pay him $40 million a year annually to attempt to develop him. That's just my philosophy here. Daniel Jones has tremendous potential. It's just at this point when he's getting this type of contract, you want to know the type of player he is. And after four years, when he's at the age of 25 to say that, hey, we're still developing this young man. I understand you didn't nail your head coaches before. Your general manager was an idiot prior to this. You don't want to give up on Daniel Jones too quickly. But the pro of not giving up on Daniel Jones too quickly was one, yes, of course, he possesses tremendous potential. But two, there'd be some gratitude for the fact that you saved this man's career and his agents would hopefully give you a hometown discount of some sort. I personally would have liked to see as much money or a little bit more than what Geno Smith makes. But so this contract actually makes Daniel Jones the 10th highest paid quarterback in the NFL, primarily because he has the same contract as Dak Prescott and Matthew Stafford do. But Matthew Stafford has 135 million guaranteed. Dak got 95 million guaranteed. Derek Carr has more money guaranteed, but he's making less over the lifespan of his contract. So he's the 10th highest paid QB in the NFL. At the surface, I do wish he would have given the Giants a bit more of a discount. But now I'm thinking after the more recent contract extensions that are going to come to quarterbacks. I mean, once Jalen Hurts gets paid, once Tua gets paid, once Joe Burrow gets paid, once Justin Herbert gets paid, his contract might actually look pretty nice. So I don't know how I feel about this in general. A part of me feels like it was a mistake, but I could also see the logic to it. So if you're a New York Giants fan in particular, I would like to get your take on this situation in the comment section down below. Aside from that, I'm your boy, Mike. I'm dropping our mic until our next upload.